for a moment and remember I'm in the back seat with Alan Hawk up. Yes, to land this Mr. Fish. Walter Gretzky. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm fine. I'm still standing beside you. Hey, wow. <laughs> Take two. Just go ahead and pinch me. Go on now. Their craft has to be the 48-foot wooden schooners, the traditional kind. Hi, I'm Stephanie Beaumont. Welcome to CNBC, the show that celebrates all the people, places, and things that make the four Atlantic provinces so very special. From Nova Scotia to New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island to Newfoundland and Labrador, we take you to where the action is. And that's where we are today, to shop in Charlottetown at the 48th Annual Prince Edward Island Craft Council Christmas Fair. It's the most wonderful time of the year, the time when the craftiest folks congregate at the Confederation Center. They've come from all over this gentle island, more than 50 juried artists and artisans, potters and weavers, carvers and jewelers, leather shapers, pitcher takers, cheese makers and more. You name it, they're here to show and tell and sell. And before we get to buying, I need to catch up to one very busy crafter. This is the lady that has been uh, my go-to gal. And oh, you're just, you're oozing talent. Ladies and gentlemen, Suzanne Scott, your vice president, though, right, of the... Of the PEI Crafts Council. Craft Council, okay. Mm -hmm. But she's also a well, an artist, you're a social media mogul. I mean, you do it all. Yeah, I got a few things going on. Yeah, yeah. that's for sure. Very good. Yeah. Well, you have got a great fair going on here today. And mm. one of the biggest ever, would that be fair? I think so. I yeah. think so. Um, yesterday we saw so many people through the door and today, Saturday, is going to be a busy one as well. So we're really excited. Now mm. what is it about Prince Edward Island? Is it more, are there more mm. artists per capita or is it just me? I think me? so. I think is so. It? Yeah. I think that there's, uh, there's definitely a really thriving craft community. Um, there's probably about 40 or 50 potters alone. And then there's, you know, a woodworking guild. There's weavers that get together and do these retreats and just weave the whole weekend. Nice. and. I don't know, it's a lot, it's very generational too, like there are tons of uh, father and son and mother and daughter like us, yes. and uh, yeah, it just is, has been passed along through the years. Which is great. Okay, mm. now let's talk about Village Pottery, because mm. it is an institution really, it's been, you guys have been throwing and crafting and doing all that stuff out there for a lot of years. 40 years is our, next year is 40. Wow. Yeah, and so. beautiful stuff. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, we, uh, we like to have a lot of different colors. So pretty much every color in the rainbow now over the 40 years we've added on new glazes. Um, we've got 10 potters work, so all different styles. And you can yeah. see us throwing um, while you're at the studio. And there's beautiful gardens that you can walk around. And uh, it's just in a really Even a nice B &B? spot. Is that right? Is there still a B&B? There's one next door. Yeah, nice. there's one place. You can rent out the potter's house. Oh, yeah. sweet. Very good. <laughs> we talk about the craft fair and the experience here this mm. year. You can actually get in on the learning, too, right? People are sharing their crafts. We have... Um, Susan Christensen is painting, so you can go and watch her paint, and she will even let you paint as well really? a little bit, yeah, if you're lucky. <laughs> um, and then there's the PEI uh, Potter Studio, and they offer great classes year-round, but they're here throwing, and actually offered to uh, give you a little chance on the wheel there, so I think you Please, can. no wagering. <laughs> well, I'll try and get on Get your hands sure. dirty. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we've got rug hookers and weavers. Uh, there's a few ladies spinning up near the entrance. Right. So it's and all music happening. and food. Music and food, yeah. I mean, what all more do you want? Stuff. Oh, it's all good. Thanks for inviting yeah. us. Well, thanks for coming. Forget, I'm going to go shop and learn and throw and paint. Lots to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure I had a busy day ahead of me. With PEI's finest handcrafters under one roof, there was no end to amazing art and festive finds. I even found two best friends. Artist Lynn Gadet specializes in beautiful paintings, while her pal Candy Gallant creates in sculpture. Merge those talents and you get something incredible, something unique, something like this. <laughs> D don't don't drive angry. Don't drive angry. That's all I can say. <laughs> Unbelievable. So you basically have fused your talents together. Who came up with this idea? And be honest. I think Len started. I started with a little mouse. I had painted this mouse, and I had painted a. Um, no, I didn't do the mouse, but I did. I fell in love with this piece of wood. Yes. So I painted the wood on the canvas, and there was a knot in the wood, like a hole. And I said, there needs to be something there. Yeah, so I thought, oh, well, how about half a mouse or something? You know, so right. I called her up and said, can you do me just half the mouse? Just cut his body off. I just want the top, you know. And what did yeah. you think of that idea? I thought it was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did the butts coming out. <laughs> 
not that kind of show. Yeah. So, okay, so now who comes up with what first? Obviously the mouse, but now when you get to you sit down and you say, let's do s people sledding down hills, like how does it work? We, um, I think a lot of it, we start working on one piece and Lynn will say, oh, this would be neat. And I'll say, oh yeah, but we could do that. And it just, like a snowball, grows and grows and grows. We start with something really plain, it ends up completely different. The beginning concept is not the end. Well, very, well that's a creative process, right? Oh, very. Still ahead on CNBC, we get in on that creative process. I'll try my hand at hooking, throw down with a potter, even mix up a merry martini. But first, let's catch up to an artist who's the toast of the town. Artist Susan Christensen is a native of the Gentle Island, and her gallery is located in Cavendish, but she's known around the world. Indeed, her image Beachwalk PEI was chosen to represent Prince Edward Island at the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver. She's creating on location during this year's craft fair, but she took a break to chat with us about her inspirational homeland. The island has always been my home, and I've walked these shores my whole life. I love the peacefulness and serenity of the island and its beauty, so that's where my art comes from. It comes from that place where where I feel the island and people that look at my artwork they don't look at it just as a pretty picture they see that they see what I'm capturing they see the serenity they see the peacefulness in it right yeah some of these look so real they almost look like photographs Susan yeah I know people say that I just started painting in 2004 what yeah <laughs> are you kidding me and this what? this flower the hibiscus was my first painting uh, this one here and okay, hold the phone. Wait a minute. That's only, I'm going to do the math. That's not even 10 years a painter. And now what were you doing before that you weren't, you had this closeted talent? Well, I worked in tourism in like I had a gift shop and a resort and uh, I, I was in accommodations and, and gift shop. And I was involved with the tourists already, um, but I always had this dream. <laughs> I cannot believe it. This is unbelievable. So, and then you just woke up one day and... Well, I took a workshop, and when I took the workshop, all these light bulbs went on inside my head, and I thought, I can do this. This is cool. And then I just got really excited, and all I wanted to do was paint. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, my gosh. I'm so glad you discovered this talent. Your mm -hmm. stuff is absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love what I do. <laughs> That's the most important thing to me. That is a Turkish drop spindle. And you are looking at the ladies of the spinning and weaving... Weavers Guild of PEI. Of, look at them. They're fierce and they're, they haven't stopped working. <laughs> They've been here all day. They, do they give you a break at all? <laughs> a break? What do you mean? No, see? They just won't stop. They're, they're crafters. It's in their heart. It's in their spirit. And now I'm running down here to hang out with some hookers. All right, I'm going to start down over here. What's your name, lady? Betty Cameron. Betty Cameron, what are you doing now? I'm working on a, um, a wedding mat for one of my daughters. It's two lovebirds. Did you cut that yourself? How does that work? I have a little machine that as you feed your, your piece of wool maybe four inches wide through, and you roll it through, it comes out like spaghetti on the other end, cuts your strips for you. This happens to be a number five. I believe Mary's got an eight. Um, can, you can go anywhere from number two to number eight. Fantastic. And that's a beautiful way. design, by the way, all from your all from your heart and your head. Is that right? I didn't design this, oh, but didn't. I color planned it. So beautiful, yeah. Thank beautiful you. work. Well, and uh, all the best to your daughter. Thank you. All right. When's she getting married? Uh, June. Nice. Yeah. Are you are you panicked or calm? Well, it may not be done, and it may, but we'll have to see. It'll be done. You're doing great work. Now, Mary, what's going on here now, honey? Okay. Pulling up loops, as Betty was, was explaining, um, my strips are a little bit wider, so I hook a little higher. And again, this was a pattern that I just made up out of my head, and it's a way of using up uh, scraps, and we call them worms. And uh, I have a lot of worms after 26 years. Oh my gosh. That's not a very And good it's thing art. To say. Well, <laughs> I don't know. And by the time it's done, it's going to be magical. Yeah, Mary, be thank you for that. So, you're welcome. Very good. All right, now we're moving down here. And we're going to sit beside Anne, who has agreed, and I'm not sure why. I think she pulled the short straw or the port that you pulled the short loop. Would that be right? And you got no, saddled with teaching loop. me. But I'm not saddled with teaching you. I'd love to teach you. Now, your first worry was, what happens if I make a mistake, Yes. Right? Well, rug hooking is very easy because all you do is pull, it's gone. Oh, and that's it. And then you can put it so, back in again. So there's absolutely no way you can wreck it. 
it with two fingers. You okay. go in, you make a hole, and you make your hole as big as possible. Okay. And then you place the wool on your hand. Okay. And then you go down again. You leave this up because you're going to cut this off. Right. You go in again right next to it. Okay. You place it, and you pull it up, and you push it towards that end. How many down. spots are you going over? Is there on one or two? Doesn't one or matter. two. Okay. If you go three, you'll notice that and you're going to have a loop. And how do you go two? Oh yes, indeed. Now what can I do? I just pull it out. Okay. Oh, and that's it. Okay. And I'm going to try it now. Yes, you are. I don't know if I feel good about this. I'm still okay. And have your hook facing that way. That way. Oh boy. No, not your hand. Just the hook part. Oh my Make God. that big hole. Oh, I did. That's what I didn't do. Okay. Making the big hole. And you need How to, long is the show? You need two hands okay. to hold your wool. Two fingers to hold your wool. So, oh, you I didn't move that, that down. Why was it leaving my thumb there? I don't know. Nobody I told knows. You not to. I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh, well, that so, makes it infinitely easier. And then pull easier. it right through because you're going to leave oh, your I'm end up. Oh, I'm going to leave my end up to secure it. I this is going to take a hand. while. We'll be right back with more CNBC. You're mad at me now, aren't you? No. Okay. You have to get a little closer. <laughs> the side of ocean blue. In my dreams, there's family. That was me then, and this is me now. I still love Christmas, especially Christmas by the sea. For Christmas by Hi, I'm Patrick Ledwell, and you're watching See and Be Seen, filming in Charlottetown, PEI. Look for it on a map. Sometimes the island's left off, but frequently, if it's a maritime map, it's in there somewhere. I'm pleased to have here with me today my book, I'm an Islander, fresh from the presses this year and available in fine bookstores as well as on the internet, I'm told, or as we call it on PEI, the Google. It's got explanations about the strange place that we call Pritchard Island, a little sandbar that has lots of odd aspects of culture. I've also got some seasonal stories in here. One of my favorites uh, at the end of the book is called The Plasticine Nativity. It's about the time that myself and my five siblings made all the figures of the nativity right out of Plasticine. They had a large variance in the sizes. Virgin Mary was huge with her arms outstretched. The baby Jesus was a rolled up log, standby kind of technique in Plasticine land. And all told, it was a testament to the glory of Christmas and how it just latches hold of a child's imagination. So there's lots in here explaining this province. If you ever wondered what's going on over here, I'm pleased to present it to you and pleased to be here on Sea and Be Seen. Good day. It's a good day indeed at Charlottetown's Confederation Center. The 48th Annual PEI Crafts Council Christmas Fair is in full swing and I'm finding so many of my favorite things. Snowmen! I love snowmen. It's fair to say I'll leave with a few. Another craft in vast supply is pottery, with so many beautiful and unique designs handmade by so many gifted island folks. And you know, the PEI Pottery Studio Co-op has schooled a lot of those artists. Um, maybe uh, some rookies, like me, uh, will gleam something from you folks. Is that right, Barb McDonald? Well, yes, we have. There, some of our members have started to sell their own work. So, yes. Yes. I know. You know. Did you see how um, maybe I don't know apprehensive Barb was when I asked her if perhaps I could do it? You paused, eh? And you looked at oh, me no. and you sized me up as a potter and no, you said, no. "I don't know." No, that wasn't it at okay. all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, anybody could could stop by the studio and, and take a class. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yes. And great instructors, I'm imagining. Yes, we hire professional potters to teach. Okay. And uh, and then once people have taken a class, they're in, in welcome to join the co-op as a member. Okay. And then they can continue to practice their skills and, and hone their craft. Exactly. Okay. All right, now you've got a wheel here. Yes. And and uh, just take us through some of the basics. This would be okay. CNBC's first ever edition of Pottery 101. Okay. All right, go ahead. Oh. Oops. Is that That's too loud? why no, <laughs> never too loud. Okay. Um, so the first thing we have to do is to um, is to make sure that it's centered on the wheel, and you just kind of have to. At this point, do you know what you're making, Barb? Um, I think I'll make a bowl. Okay. Is that what people start with? Is the bowl? Is that the simplest? Um, well, what you're, you're supposed to start with doing like a basic cylinder, and then you can uh, make different shapes from that. Okay. 
I'm guessing it's relaxing to an extent, would you say? Oh yes, it's very relaxing, yeah. And um, like for me, I just do it for fun and I've never really, you know, gotten really good at it, but... but so I far, just... so good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Want me to step in there now? Uh, sure. <laughs> she said, again, with the apprehension barb. Okay. So, well, you, the, uh, do you want me to make the hole first? Should I do that? Uh, sure, if okay, you want so to. Okay, so now, okay. So you just put your thumb there and okay. and uh, you push it down. And that's See, I've, it. I've, I, like, it's, you know, almost Are to the bottom. Are you controlling that pedal? Or have you got it on a certain speed? It's, it, it will just stay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so you try it. All right, very good. Thank you. Please, no wagering. So just put my thumb down in. Yeah, put, put it, keep, keep pushing down. Can I put water on here? Uh, yeah, you could put a little bit of water on. There you go. I've seen that. I, that looks yeah. like I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And you should I hold... Like that I do. Oh, I should hold the outside? Yeah. Uh-oh. Is it... Now I've got it warbling. Yeah. That's not normal, so is it? So maybe try to... Oh, gee. <laughs> that could be something now, Barb. Yes. No? Definitely. <laughs> People are laughing. It shouldn't warble. No, it shouldn't. How do I get it to stop warbling? Well, do you want me to try to fix it? I don't know if could I can. Could you fix it? Is this fixable, Barb? I don't know. I okay. can try. <laughs> Save my bowl, Barb. <laughs> Barb McDonald, you're a, you're like a pottery angel. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, glad to be of service. Well, I'm worn out from the wheel. Let's say we take a break and take ourselves down the street to one of my favorite spots in the capital city, the Delta Prince Edward. <laughs> 